Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. As you can see, I am trying out something new today and I'm gonna do my first ever podcast here on the channel and I am actually here with my friend, Cher. Hi, thanks so much for having me. I'm so <laughs> to be here. So in this episode, which is the first episode ever, we're gonna talk mm -hmm. about life in our 20s and the underlying title of this is actually Quarter Life Crisis. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And we actually got the idea to do this podcast randomly when we had lunch. Like, we were just talking about life and, like, navigating life in our 20s, basically. And then you were talking about doing a podcast, I think. Yeah, like, doing something different, kind of speaking about how we're reaching, uh, like, mid-20s and kind of navigating through that. Yeah, and then I was yeah. like, well, that was such a coincidence because I just wrote down, like, ideas for my YouTube channel. And one of them is about quarter-life crisis or just live in our 20s. So here we are. That was like two months ago, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> it's been yeah. a while. Okay, so maybe we should like explain a bit about ourselves. Just like the context about like, why are we talking about this right now? Like I am literally turning 25 this month. <laughs> so this is the exact right time to talk about quarter life crisis. And you just had your birthday. Yeah, it's a couple of weeks ago. And it hadn't really hit me that I'm 24 <laughs> until, I feel like it never really hits anybody, but yeah. Um, it's just scary knowing that there's so much that I have yet to do. I think that's exactly like what everyone feels in their 20s. Like we are literally transitioning from being a child, basically, yeah, <laughs> like being like in school. Child, like. And then suddenly we have to act like an adult, but not completely because like for example, like, I would still live with my parents if I'm home, and you yeah, you still live with I your still parents do. too, but, like, we have to start figuring out what we actually want to do with our lives, and... Yeah, getting to know everything, like, doing things ourselves yeah. is always really scary, but always a good challenge, I feel. Before we get deeper into talking about our lives in our 20s, obviously, we're also going to talk about how we ended up studying and, like, choosing this field. But speaking of studying abroad, I also want to let you guys know that if you're interested in studying abroad, you definitely have to find a place and I'm here to tell you how to find an accommodation for you in the easiest most convenient way and it is through Amber Student. Amber Student is a platform that can help you find a student housing for you. Despite me being in Australia it is actually available in so many different countries and in Australia itself it's not only available in Melbourne but also in these cities so you have so many options there. Now if you're still like completely clueless about finding an accommodation you wonder like why should I use Amber Student it is because it is very easy to use it's very easy to navigate if you've never done any of these stuff they have a lot of choices of student housings compiled together in one platform but all these student housings have been verified so it's completely safe and Amber student has been used by so many students so they are trusted as well and they will help you through the entire process from booking the student housing to even post move in process to make sure that everything goes smoothly for you there are no hidden charges or extra fees so you don't have to worry about having to pay more all you need to do is go to the link in my description box look at the location that you prefer so the options that will be suggested to you will be surrounding the area that you want you can also add more preferences and then they will give you suggestions based on that and then you can do your own research and look up the housing there are photos of the entire facilities of the room you can also do a virtual tour so you don't have to actually like physically be there to inspect and once you've decided which one you want you can just do an online booking there and then the booking assistant will contact you. I'm letting you guys know right now because even though we still have some time before the next semester, there are lots of perks to early booking because you have so many options obviously, like most of them are still available, so you can get better locations as well. So yeah, go to the link in my description box, tell your friends about it too, and make everyone get a very seamless move-in process for studying abroad. How do you feel about like when you entered your 20s, do you feel like it's such a groundbreaking moment in your life? Um, I think when I turned 20, it was during lockdown and I felt like I didn't really have a proper transition into my 20s just because Yeah, that's so fair. I think that was the first year that COVID started in Melbourne and obviously in Melbourne we had quite a lengthy restriction in the city and so I feel like I still don't really feel like I'm 24 even like in my 20s. I feel like I'm still like 21 maybe like in my head. <laughs> but yeah, I feel like people assume that like being in your 20s you have to like do all these things but in reality like everyone's going through their own journey. Um, everyone's still trying to figure it out so I think 
um, you have to enjoy the process as well. <laughs> Honestly, that makes so much sense because I always say that I'm still like a 24 year old teenager because I feel like I'm still a teenager at heart, which is like very childish of me. As you should. But um, yeah, it felt really weird because we turned 20 something during COVID and I feel like that's just like a huge leap. Yeah. Like there's some gap in those lockdown phase, but. Yeah, what was it like in Indonesia during COVID? Oh. I feel like maybe we weren't as strict here. I mean, in Indonesia compared to Melbourne. So did you have like a lengthy, like, like, was it just like temporary? Like, did you have like It's kind of like our rules were grayish. Oh, okay. So like, really you know, like, we're not allowed to do this, but then like some people do it and it's okay. But then someone <laughs> got in trouble. That's why Melbourne had like a tiny lockdown. Oh, really? oh my gosh. Yeah. yeah. But I think I remember feeling so anxious mm-hmm. because I realized that it wasn't just 20s, but it's about graduating from bachelor's and for the first time I have to actually think about what I want to do after I graduate yeah something serious and like like... so much uncertainty during Mm -hmm. the time but weirdly when I graduated I was like wait it's not even that deep deep. (laughs) I mean it was that deep but like it wasn't as scary as I thought like just I just went through my life like day by day but like and it worked out and now you have your own business Thriving. Go boss. Let's go. Well, you're thriving too. Like, (laughs) no, because literally every single person that knows what you did, like, for your work, they would be so jealous. Because, like, you live, like, Emily in Paris. So, like, I've always said that you're, like, (laughs) Cher in Melbourne. That is my dream. Um, But, yeah, I'll I'll tell you about my, like, event later on. Oh, yeah, by the way, when we were talking about Cher in Melbourne, because she literally worked in marketing. Yeah, in advertising. She got, like, tickets and access to so many cool events, like Melbourne Fashion Week, F1, Australian Open. Yeah, that was one of the perks of working media. Um, Yeah, really fun part of my life. But also, yeah, learned a lot through my two years of experience. Um, I mean, I might go back. We'll see. I mean, we'll see how it goes in the job market. It's so rough at the moment. <laughs> this is also <laughs> a huge part of quarter life crisis, by the way. Yeah, just figure out what you want to do. Um, and then once yeah. we decided that we want to do this, it's actually... We actually mm, want to travel instead. Like, yeah. Or, like, it's not even as easy as we thought it would be. And then it would yeah. be, like... We would change our minds and like... It's so hard to balance, like if you want to like climb the corporate ladder, like have your own business or even like travel and enjoy your 20s, like it's a really hard balance. I mean, I feel like if we get the choice, we would all just travel, but we need the money to travel. Yeah, exactly. Um, and we also like work so hard in yeah. need to get to a certain stage that we want to achieve something and also like please our parents as well. <laughs> yeah. well okay, that. pleasing our parents is such like... A big part of Asian culture. <laughs> yeah, it's its own topic, honestly. I feel like we yeah. can just talk about that for a long time. Yeah. Wait, now, if you said so, if you can do whatever you want without, like, thinking Ooh. about the pleasing your parents part, what would you do? I mean, my parents are really understanding in the sense that they always want the best for me, and I'm really grateful for that, that I have such supportive parents. If I can do anything I want, like, working in beauty fashion would be a dream, but it's, like, highly competitive and the pay is not necessarily the best but then i would love a job that allows me to travel as well so yeah maybe i don't know i love attending events that's a big part of for when i um, work for a company and that's why i really enjoyed my time at my old media agency but then also i'm still so young um i'm open to like exploring different things maybe there's areas that i've never tried before that I'll be interested in or even like better at. I feel like we're yeah. also at the age where it's like kind of weird because some people would say that you're still young, do like explore yeah, so many things, travel and like take risks and yeah. stuff. But at the same time, like the other side would say that you're not a child anymore. You have yeah, to start being serious. serious about what you want to do. Yeah, I know my dad says that a lot. <laughs> See my two years of working as like proper experience. He's like, you should take it seriously now. Like at a certain age, you should be a manager. I'm like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> what about your parents like do they kind of obviously like you've had your own business yeah like, i'm very grateful for like having supportive parents and i think the only thing that they have always told me um to not do actually is to be like a corporate slave yeah <laughs> that is the dream. i mean if you yeah know. like they literally forbid me to apply for jobs oh so like that's why i have to start my own business but like i mean it's not like 
a restriction. I don't feel like they're limiting me. I feel like they've always empowered and like encouraged me from like such a young age. And when I started this YouTube channel, they also supported me. <laughs> I didn't tell my dad about it, by the way, for like the first couple of months, which was very strange because I live in the same house as him. <laughs> it was more of a fun like thing to. But I mean, it's monetized, so it's okay. also a job. Yeah, kind of sure. like there are still lots of parents that don't see like doing youtube as a job but my parents see it that way and yeah, like it is so yeah i guess that's what i'm grateful for like yeah you don't necessarily have to follow like a certain pathway yeah. like if if you're really good at social media then you should excel in that but yeah. again quarter life crisis i feel like <laughs> yeah. i feel like there are times when i would feel oh, I love what I do so much. Like, this has always been my dream to do something like this. But at the same time, I would also think, like, why am I not achieving as much as I thought I would be at this age? Like, I thought I would be, like, so rich at this point. I'm 25. <laughs> also, like, everyone is, like, struggling at the moment. But actually, yeah. Have you seen that um, TikTok make, like video of how people are, like, if you could imagine yourself, see yourself now from five years ago, you'd be so happy that you've achieved so many things. Yeah. And that's so true. Like, even Yeah, that's like, so true. Sometimes I just have to be in the moment and not kind of yeah. always look forward to the future. Yeah, I've been seeing like lots of TikToks about people saying that like if you feel down or something, just remember that 13 year old you would think that you're so hot and you're so cool, yeah, exactly. you're living the dream life. And okay, that is so true. Like even when I was maybe in like first grade, I was like, I think I want to live abroad someday. And like, and you know, yeah. yeah. <laughs> one of the best unis in the world. Would you want to pursue other businesses like when you get home, like straight away? Or would you just kind of see how you go and then? I mean, I have plans, but probably I'm not going to get into too much detail because I don't oh, want to okay. jinx it. Okay, yeah. <laughs> it's not like kind of a like surprise thing. I just, yeah, I don't want to jinx it. Okay. But. Yeah, fair enough. <laughs> what about you? I feel like um, you've been having this huge dilemma this semester about like <laughs> getting back into work or like do something with studying again, like, but do it abroad. Yeah. So I did a bit of traveling during like the May, July, August period in Europe and that was my first time in Europe and it really changed everything I didn't think yeah. it would. Yeah, so I'm definitely interested in kind of working abroad eventually. But at the moment I'm still looking for jobs in Melbourne, just seeing how it goes, just gain a bit more experience and then yeah, I feel like life's too short to only live in one place. Why not explore um, different opportunities? And I feel like Australia's also has always been like a little behind in terms of opportunities just because we're so geographically far from everyone else even though it's like a lovely country to live in and have a family yeah it's just like from a corporate opportunity perspective it doesn't compare to like places like london or new york so definitely we'll be open to looking into opportunities in that field in the future but i, I might be able to persuade you to visit me eventually <laughs> yes i would love yeah. that but like I have to save up <laughs> first. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. yeah speaking of like work, how did you figure out what you want to do in your twenties? Like Ooh, yeah. like when you um got a job at marketing, how did you even decide that that's what you want to do? And like now we're both studying entrepreneurship at Melbourne Uni and like how did you come to that? decision of going back to studies especially in this field so i did i studied a bachelor of arts at melbourne uni and i majored in media comms like marketing i actually didn't know what i wanted to do for uni my parents were like oh just do like commerce business just like any other asian parent <laughs> i actually didn't do so well in economics and i was like oh, okay that's not the route for me <laughs> and so like marketing media was like kind of the next best like thing in arts and so i really enjoyed that but obviously you know like melbourne uni is really academic so it yeah. actually feel like arts <laughs> it was more like theory more than actual yeah. like practical skill but it still gave me so many tools that I was able to leverage in my previous roles and so yeah so I graduated 2021 and that was kind of when Melbourne like lifted the restrictions um, and it was super rough like I applied to like 50 plus places and I only heard back from like 10 and I honestly didn't think I was gonna get a job but I'm also like very type A, like I always like being organized. I was, <laughs> and now I want to be more spontaneous now, but, and I was freaking out, but then it's so cliche, but everything happens for a reason. It happened, like I, it was one of the last jobs that I applied for, ended up getting like through, and I was like really shocked. Um, I think there was like 200 people applying um, in the country, and then I just got one of the spots, and also I got to pick the client that I was working with. So I worked with 
um, one of the world's largest beauty group, um, which is one of my dream clients to work with. So I was really, really lucky in that sense that I got to work with them straight off the bat after uni. And then I worked, yeah, full time and then kind of um, part time, full time um, on and off during my master's. And so with my master's, my dad owns his own business in interior design construction. And so he's always wanted me to have my own company, kind of similar to yours. Like if I could choose a pathway that's, I guess, not corporate, like nine to five, like just having more flexibility and like managing your own time. And I think through his own experience, obviously the first 10 years is really brutal. You really have to like be super hands on. But after that, if it gets better, you get to kind of travel a bit more, be more flexible with your time and um, really enjoy your life a bit more. And so that's kind of what he wanted for me. And also, I mean, I was kind of struggling with the nine to five idea as well. Like I really enjoyed what I was doing, but then yeah. some days it really hits you and you're like, why am I working? Like in an office or like even working from home. So um, studying entrepreneurship isn't like completely his decision for you like you yeah I wanted to have something my own as well yeah. but it was also that kind of like gray area to see if this is what I wanted or give me like some time to see if media is what I wanted or even like like you said like corporate is what yeah um, I should follow but yeah I feel like I'm still in that stage I mean I'm more sure that I definitely want more experience before I would start something of my own but yet again I'm also I really want to travel and experience <laughs> life Really, the crisis is crisising. Yeah. Crisising. <laughs> I never even planned to like get a master's degree. Yeah, neither did I. <laughs> I thought, oh, my parents both only had bachelor's degree and they're doing just fine. Like, why should yeah. I study that much? But then yeah. at one point, I feel like I miss studying and I feel mm -hmm. like I would benefit from studying more about entrepreneurship. Yeah. And I also like my main motivation, honestly, is just I want to experience living abroad by myself. Yeah, for sure. So yeah, the decision to study at Melbourne Uni was in early 2023. Okay. And I started studying in like July. So oh, that yeah. was like very spontaneous. I think that was like one of the most impulsive thing that I've ever done. Like a yeah. huge decision wise. Did you apply for anywhere else in Australia? Like no, either? like not even in Australia. I didn't apply anywhere else. It was, it was you literally get it, you just get it. If you don't, yeah. You don't. I wanted to apply to London Business School. Oh yeah. Yeah, because I've always loved London. I feel like you would like. Yeah, I see that. I don't know if I love London or it's just the idea of London. For now, we yeah. haven't decided yet. Yeah, <laughs> the verdict's London. not out yet. Yeah. But I think my parents were they would like it better if I just stay in Melbourne instead of London. So I think like because of their blessings, like things were so smooth with applying to Melbourne. So and they asked for like more requirements in London Business School, and I was just like, oh, uh, I don't like, want to bother. <laughs> academics or like documentation or like just like cause no, it's like, actually academic, not like oh. tests. Like they ask for what do you even call it? She met. Oh yeah, okay, yeah, their grading system. Yeah. Plus, I'm so glad that I decided Melbourne Uni because... You got to meet me. <laughs> <laughs> that is so true. That is so true. But also, it's a one and a half years program. With London Business School, I would have been back in Indonesia at this point. <laughs> yeah. Honestly, if I were to study all over again, I probably would kind of apply overseas. But also, that's like... You did... Another like yeah, do a, a bit, it's yeah. still like a really great experience i got to get a glimpse um, <laughs> that was like one of the biggest things i wanted to do during like my bachelor but because of COVID, yeah. it was really difficult but i'm grateful that i got that opportunity no but it might sound cliche but i feel like europe opened your eyes about yeah, so many like, things like yeah. your perspective on life yeah. and i feel like that's actually like one of the greatest things about like our experiences in our 20s and like some of the unexpected things that we do is actually so life-changing for us yeah even like the smallest things like experiencing a new culture what, what else do you have for me relationships no i don't know if that's like another friendship it's yeah friendships it's actually the next thing that i wrote down yeah. what changed do you think like compared to school friendships or like friendships in teen years I mean, I moved into state. So I'm originally from Adelaide and I moved to Melbourne for uni sort of 2019. And so it was definitely very hard for me at the start just because I didn't have a place in Adelaide anymore. And so that would mean I didn't fly back as much. And I had a really like core group of friends back there. You get a bit of FOMO, you like social media. So I kind of like. I still get FOMO. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure. Yeah, it's super cool. Um, and then obviously you would see your friends going to different events without you and sometimes like at the start they would invite you but obviously you couldn't go but then you would always appreciate those invites even though you know yeah. you couldn't go and, um, It's just the idea yeah. that they still remember to invite you Yeah, yeah. I still have um, a good handful of friends back in, uh, back in Adelaide um, but 
yeah, I think unfortunately with moving, you do tend to kind of drift away from people that you were used to see. Yeah. Um, but that's all part of growing up and um, maturing. Like sometimes, like some certain friendships are meant to last for a certain amount, and sometimes you might, you know, go back to it. And nothing, obviously, nothing bad, but you just kind of have different ways of life and have different careers. You just surround yourself with different people. You grow differently and have different experiences, and that's all. But yeah, I'm only friends with a few people from school, and obviously, like with you guys, like masters, I feel like I actually gained the most amount of friends through my masters compared to my bachelor's. Because we do the same classes, classes like yeah. all classes together. Yeah, like, and we have three hours per class, which yeah. is really good. And then right? we get lunch together and yeah, we talk yeah. a lot, yeah. We get to like, spend more time even outside of school hours, whereas like with arts, we only had like one hour tutorial and then one hour like lecture yeah. or like something like that. Honestly, we're so lucky with our programs because like yeah. everyone else, I feel like it's just harder to make friends yeah, because, sure. yeah. And like with like Melbourne, Melbournians, like they tend <laughs> to like stay within their own school yeah. group. I feel like that was like the one thing that I realized when I moved over. Well, like unless you kind of live in college, which I didn't get the opportunity to because it was so yeah. expensive and I didn't even know about it. <laughs> um, but to be honest, it was like really difficult. But then I was so lucky to meet all of you guys. Um, and even through work, um, I feel like that's kind of how you make friends now. I think nothing could have prepared me enough about how after we graduate from uni, I was so focused on myself about oh it's so uncertain after this that I didn't realize that it's uncertain for everyone that yeah. everyone's gonna pursue different things in life so like my point is like when we started going to school we have the same like you know life plan we're doing school together we graduate from school we go to uni and then after uni like some people just travel some people look for jobs some people do business but it's so different and like they're so focused on themselves that it's like just so much harder to make friends and keep in touch with friends is even like so hard yeah for sure i feel like after covid more and more people kind of went overseas and that kind of made it even like people just kind of spread out yeah. everywhere, which is really different whereas i feel like aussies would usually kind of like probably like be in australia because we're obviously so far from everywhere else but <laughs> like we're big as like a country and now it's like yeah but it's also kind of like the main thing about being in our 20s is that we constantly compare ourselves to everyone else because like it's normal that we compare our achievements to others because we're doing the same thing but yeah. once we graduate we're doing different things and we can just like be what yeah what we're doing yeah what but we want. can't like measure our achievement with someone else because we're not doing the same thing yeah, exactly. and it's especially hard to see like someone like we want to be happy for other people for their achievements like starting a new business like even being successful with that business or like getting amazing jobs but yeah. sometimes we would feel bad about ourselves yeah even though yeah. we're not like in a bad position exactly <laughs> like sometimes you always like i get fomo pretty badly and i would always kind of like compare myself but then you kind of see the other side you're like oh like sometimes you just have to take it easy like you can achieve everything you want like maybe like not everything at the same time but maybe gradually and like one step at a time <laughs> this is also like so cheesy but I love the quote that says, like, don't measure your life with someone else's ruler. Oh, that's a good one. Yeah. yeah. You know, I actually have, like, a note <laughs> um, on my phone about, like, some of the things that I needed to experience myself to actually understand. And, like, one mm -hmm. of them is about that. Like, everyone has their own timelines, but understanding that doesn't make it easier to. Yeah. And, like, social media makes it so look so yeah. easy that every everything looks so, like glamorous and you know easy but yeah, because people don't often they don't stuff. post the bad sides of their lives yeah i mean some do but it's rare but i know that a lot of people have said this but it's actually true like at this age it's better to um prioritize quality over quantity like mm. it's better to have two friends but they're like you're such good friends with them rather than having like a huge friend group but you don't yeah, connect I agree. at a deep emotional level with them. That was also like one thing that I noticed, like when I first moved to Melbourne, I was like, I'm so used to obviously high school friends, like I really want as many friends as possible, like people I can reach out to. Um, but then I come to realize that quality is really more important. Somehow when we were in high school, like being in a huge friend group and like, yeah, well. like it's so cool to have lots of friends. And you would like go to lunch, like sit with you <laughs> and then you would like hang out together, go to the same parties, that kind of stuff. But you also like, you can get that like gradually as well depending on like your personality and, like, what you want. that's true yeah but uh, yeah it would be nice to have lots of friends just like especially not just as personal friends but as like network opportunities yeah, yeah, yeah. but i, I would agree. still stick to like at least 
one or two that I connect like very yeah do anything with that really understands you like you don't feel judged when you say yeah exactly yeah, do you still know. have like long time friends from school that you're still that close yeah um I think I've got a couple because I've never I don't think I haven't had a best friend since like middle school so like year nine and onwards I did have like yeah like best friend like a different stage of my life when I was younger but yeah I have like close friends which I'm really grateful for and they're still a part of my life but like I found it really interesting that sometimes like even like with the length of friendships it doesn't necessarily mean that's true yeah the most. that's like, what I, I'm really like, even thinking you, right like now. I met like people through work I got along better with them than the people I yeah did. yeah it really doesn't matter like how long you've known people for yeah. and like also cliche but <laughs> you haven't met like some of the what like most meaningful people in your life Oh, yeah. Like, you can still find... Yeah, what's, yeah. The, what's the quote? What's the I don't number? remember. <laughs> you haven't met everyone who will love you? Something like that? Yeah, I kind of... Uh, yeah. yeah. But yeah, that is a good one. <laughs> but what about you? Do you... Are you still really close? Because, I mean, you just moved here for, like, yeah. a year and a bit, so I'm sure you are, like, with your school friends. I am also so grateful that my closest friends, exactly two people, <laughs> yeah. I've known them since first grade. Oh, that's funny. And like not just known them from first grade. This is actually insane because like one of them was the first ever person that I saw when I entered school on my first day. So that was the moment. You know, like it's like that joke that says like I met one friend and then decided that it's enough for the rest of my life. We still like FaceTime at least once a week. Oh, that's really awesome. Yeah. Yeah, it's pretty nice. But yeah, every I feel like every friendship that you gain like teaches you something as well. It can be like teach us in a good or good bad way yeah, or like yeah. hard way but yeah, yeah. <laughs> we <Yeah>. just <laughs> <laughs> what would be the most valuable lesson so far that you have learned by experiencing it oh probably just being in the moment even though that's also really cliche like sometimes you don't know what you have until it's gone <laughs> so, yeah. but like, no but like the thing about cliches is that it's so it's true. Yeah. yeah. And like you really have to, like you don't know honestly what you have. Like even look, like during work, I was like, there were times where I would like complain, even though it wasn't that bad. But looking back, I was like, it's not even that bad. Why was I even like complaining? Like I had so many good experiences, like maybe some bad, but it taught me everything that I need to know and become the person I am today. Um, and yeah, just being, just do it. My dad loves saying that. It's like, the <laughs> just do it, just go for it. Um, don't hesitate. Like if it's something... It might feel scary at first, but then after you've experienced it, like you'd be more open to other things, and you don't know what's going to happen through that, so just do it. Yeah. Everything so happens true. for a reason. Yeah, that's so true. <laughs> when it's right for you, it will feel easy. Yeah, exactly. And if it's meant to be, it's meant to be. Like, yeah. If you're ready for it, then it'll come to you, hence you should do it. Okay. I think for me, it would be like, we're constantly growing. I feel like at one point we would have stopped. But like that's so not true because like yeah. you grow every day. Yeah. And like you don't have to put so much pressure on yourself sometimes. And I feel like as like a I'm sure you can relate as well as like a like perfectionist, like you're like you're kind of like um, I'm not a full on perfectionist by but the like, way, you're but yeah. To yourself, but yeah. Yeah, no, it's good that like sometimes you feel like you need to get everything done at a certain point in your life. But <laughs> you don't have to and it's okay to kind of go with the flow. I just wrote this down like a couple of weeks ago, I think. The journey of like discovering yourself yeah. is never ending. Like at one point you thought, oh, so this is who I am. But like it changes all the time. And like the yeah. journey itself isn't linear. How yeah. was I so deep? Like I didn't, <laughs> I don't know that I can write something like this. But like yeah. just because you changed and feel more like yourself doesn't mean the previous version wasn't truly you. But sometimes I can't tell the difference in moments whether I'm losing myself or finding my true self. Oh my god. You wrote this. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> I usually <laughs> came up with these type of things like at night or like in the bathroom. <laughs> yeah, like, right, you weren't like, an author or anything because you love reading. I've never thought of it, but oh, now that I've read yeah. so much, I started thinking, no, I'm not thinking about it. I just, I don't know, we'll see how it goes, well, you I guess. Can, like, explore like storytelling in a different way. Like, I don't know, I feel like you'd be really good at that. I mean, I'm not um you know i'm open to the idea but i yeah. haven't really thought of it that much literature is not i don't know i don't want to say oh, it's okay. not my space but we never know yeah, i never I thought know. that i would do a youtube channel anyway maybe you'll do like a self-help kind of book <laughs> like not self-help what do you say like self-improvement i, I read those books i like because that's the only books 
I, I want to say, how am I helping other people? I'm just yeah. trying to help myself right now. <laughs> Anyways, this is our last part. And we've talked for almost an hour. No, it's 46 minutes. We're good. We haven't even had a proper break. We're just... Yeah, we've like... Okay, we're almost done. The last part would be about the future. Is it important to have a long-term goals right now? Um, I think having a certain structure or having kind of an ideology provides a pathway or like a certain route towards kind of yeah. the road that I want to pursue. Like, do you have do you have a collage of things you want to achieve? Like through photos like on your in your bedroom not in my bedroom but yeah. i sometimes use it as like my laptop wallpaper or, yeah, like, yeah. it's just more aesthetic i think like putting it on my room sometimes it's not like the vibe that i want to go for yeah, fair, <laughs> enough. fair enough i have like a collage of oh that's so like, cool like a dream like scenario and even like i and i did it like probably like two years ago and it's so funny looking back at it now it's the same goals that i still have it's i've literally achieved so much which is why i'm like you should really appreciate every moment it's like there's That's like amazing. Emily in Paris. I'm not kidding. There's an Emily in Paris poster. There's like all these like L'Oreal YSL events. And I even had like L'Oreal LVMH. And I even like to look at that one point on my poster. I'm just like traveling like Rome, Paris, like New York, just like photos of that in my bedroom. And that's kind of something I look at like on a regular, like daily basis. That's yeah, kind of like my that is amazing. Um, and I feel like I'm like getting there, which is like funny. <laughs> I didn't think it would be that effective, and, but it works like manifestation. I think my mistake with that is actually sometimes I focus too much on the things that I haven't achieved yet. Sometimes instead of motivating me, it would like bring me down. So sometimes yeah, I'm afraid to do that. But yeah, it really depends on like perspective. I think that's just the key. Yeah, so true. What's your like coping mechanism on like how to not feel too anxious about the future? Um, just be optimistic and hopeful. I think just take it one step at a time. Like even hopeful. I think even like right now, like I haven't found a job. I've been rejected <laughs> numerous times, which is like more than I thought I would honestly. But then you kind of see the other side. Like if this doesn't work out, it's a sign for you to pursue something else like what's that cliche thing again one door closes another one opens. <laughs> and it's so true like if it's not meant to be maybe you're meant to be somewhere else and yeah. there's always opportunity like to grow you can kind of meet different people and they can kind of bring you to somewhere else as well i think at one point i've started to learn to embrace the uncertainty yeah the ambiguity really i mean it's still so hard like i'm starting to feel like just a little anxious about graduating and coming back to indonesia and like getting back to reality kind of it's but so nervous, yeah it means we care and like we want to put the best put effort forward. and like yeah. yeah get the best result for our lives i guess you're right about your point with just be in the present and like having awesome. a long-term goal is good because then you can break it down to like what you want to do short in small time. yeah in short terms to achieve it but we have to like not get too focused on the you know like how do i say it don't let like the huge long-term goal daunt you like mm -hmm. it can be intimidating if you see it that way yeah. but like focusing on like doing it day by day is very helpful honestly and being like surrounded by people that really support you is yeah that is so really important and then, like really like even like every time you maybe feel stressed or you don't know what to do like they can really lift you up and um, make you feel like you're the best version of yourself and it's okay to make mistakes it's okay to like you know be disappointed at certain times yeah. but then you can always climb back up yeah my dad loves to say like failing is a really important life lesson because that really helps you become the best version of yourself and the more you fail the better you'll become and so i feel like i really live by that your like, dad honestly. should write a self-help book yeah. oh, my dad's a yeah. he lectures me like when i was younger my dad lectures me all the time no when i was little i've, I've always been lectured by my dad and i would like sit there and he would speak for hours and throughout life. And he was like, why aren't you old? Like, I want to speak about more serious things. And at the time, I was like... Ten. My dad does that all the time. Especially, like, when we're all at home. Yeah, and I would, like, sit on the couch just, like, chilling. And he's yeah. talking. Exactly and the like, same. Hours. And I was like, at the time, I didn't really appreciate it because I was so young. I didn't yeah. know what he was talking about. But then now that I'm older, we get to have more things in common, such as, like, business and experience that we get to... We actually have more things in common. Yeah. Which is... I mean, I've lived alone for like over a year and like yeah, every feel? week 
I still FaceTime my parents. And my dad would still lecture me on FaceTime. Yeah. <laughs> Even like when we were in high school, my dad would ask us to do a presentation at home. Like we would have to create oh a PowerPoint of like our life plan. Okay, what do we want to do? Where do we want to study to be able to achieve that dream? Like it was so serious, I swear. Oh my gosh. You know what? We should do that when we, next year, when you're back at home. We should have like a, like a quarterly like update. Yeah, that would be so fun. <laughs> With that whole MOE through so that we can like get to know each other. <laughs> Alright. Fifty five minutes, oh, no wow, breaks, okay. full on yab. But Thanks it's guys. been Thanks yeah, it's actually me. been so fun. Thanks for having me. Hope to come back. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I hope it was helpful. Even if it wasn't, I hope it was entertaining <laughs> for you to listen to. If it goes well, we'll do another episode. <laughs> Who's your next guest? You. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, thank you so much for watching.